Hello, my name is Kevin Clay, and I am one of the Lean Six Sigma instructors here at Six Sigma Development Solutions Incorporated. Today, I'm going to take you on a brief introduction to the variable gauge RNR using Minitabs version 20. The uh, variable gauge RNR is a uh, measurement systems analysis. Uh, this is a way that we determine that the data that we have. Uh, in the measure stage of the DMAIC is, is actually good data uh, because if data is, is really at the core of what we are going to analyze to, to find the problem, we, we have to make sure that uh, our, our measurement, our data is correct. Uh, you know, following the little ad adage, uh, garbage in, garbage out, we want to make sure that we don't have garbage in. So, um, this data that you see on your screen, this comes from uh, an experiment we run during the uh, Greenbelt class. We, we actually do a number of gauge RNRs. We do a variable gauge RNR and we also do an attribute gauge RNR. The variable gauge RNR, I'll just uh, set it up for you. Uh, the variable gauge RNR, basically what we do is we have uh, 10 cups of water of varying heights of water. Uh, and these cups are clear so we can, you know, see through them. Uh, and we have under each cup, we have a post-it note with a number, uh, number one, two, three, four, all the way through 10. So we, uh, we determine who are going to be the inspectors for the gauge R and R. Um, and then we have those inspectors each come in and inspect those cups with a measuring device um, three different times. All right, and, and this, kind of, this follows a uh, uh, gauge r, &R study. All right, so uh, this data is actually from doing that at one point in time, uh, and we captured that data. But again, we do that in every class that we have. So uh, I'm going to show you how to do the uh, gauge r, &R the variable gauge r, &R using uh, the data here that you see on the screen. So uh, the gauge r, &R uh, we are going to use the assistant. This really does the heavy lifting for us. Uh, it makes uh, analyzing data, you know, a lot more simpler. Uh, and, and you'll see uh, as we introduce this tool. So measurement system analysis, it, it's pretty uh, self-explanatory in what we're going to use. Okay. Uh, and we are going to analyze uh, uh, measurement data, not appraisal data. Appraisal data is, you know, good, bad. Uh, we'll talk about that in, in a minute. Um, I, I'm sorry, we'll talk about that in another uh, YouTube video. Uh, but this video is going to be focused on measurement data or continuous data. All right, so one of the great benefits of uh, the assistant is the assistant really kind of does the heavy lifting for you. Again, like I said, uh, so you come into here into this, uh, this flow chart and it helps you to understand really what it is that you're, you're gonna analyze. So let's say I'm a brand new green belt and um, I, I've, got, I've got measurement data, but you know, I, I look here and I see measurement and appraisal and I go, you know, I, I'm not really sure which one is which. Uh, and let's say that, that I've got, you know, the measurements of something in ounces uh, that I'm measuring, you know, with some kind of a measurement device, a ruler, et cetera. Um, so, uh, and, and in this case, it's, a, it's the height of water in a cup. So I don't know which one uh, that I'm supposed to use. So what I can do is I can click on this data type and that'll give me uh, an explanation of what measurement data and appraisal data is. All right, so I read this and from this I determine, okay, I've got measurement data because I'm not really looking at pass fail. All right, so I hit back, that takes me back to here and then I'm, I'm moved down this flow chart uh, and then I see set up study or analyze data. And again, brand new green belts, you know, uh, not familiar 
with Minitab. So I say, you know, am I setting a study up or am I analyzing data? All right. So basically, in this case, I've got the data prepared. But again, I don't I don't know if that means uh, do I need to set up anything else or do I just need to analyze? So I, I click on this objective and that might give me some information about, you know, my question. So I look, look at setup study and I look at analyze measurement data and, and lo and behold, I find out, you know, I've actually got data uh, uh, that I can now analyze. All right, now let me back up and, and before we analyze data, I'm gonna show you how to set up data, all right? So a measurement system analysis is really a, a controlled environment, all right? Where you get your inspectors in, in, the, in a room um, or in, in, in an area and you have them inspect uh, parts or services or transactions, all right? Uh, but to do that, you have to set up the study so that, that you can then run that study. So let's go into our gauge R and R worksheet. And this is actually where, we're gonna, where, where we are going to set up a study, all right? In, in the worksheet that I've got, I've already set up the study and I've already measured. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you back to how I set up the study before I measure. And let's say uh, my, my number of operators, the operators are the, the people who inspect. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna say I've got three operators. And what's great about, uh, about this tool is I can go in here and I can name these operators. I can name it the first Kevin, the second Jen, the third Aaron. And then a uh, number of rep replicates. This is gonna be the amount of time that the operator repeats the inspection, all right? Repeats the inspection. Uh, and the more replicates you have, the better understanding you're gonna have of what, what uh, is truly happening uh, with the operator as they are interacting uh, and measuring the, the uh, parts or the services or transactions, whatever. Uh, then we have number of parts. So uh, we have 10 right now. I could put this to 20, 30, whatever. Okay. And I can actually name the parts. If, if there's a part name, if there's something to uniquely identify that part, I can do that. Uh, in this case, I'm not, I'm not going to go that far. So uh, I hit OK. And when I do, it is going to create a study for me. Right. And as you'll see, the measurement uh, column is not filled in. That's because we haven't done, we, we haven't started the, the actual experiment. We haven't started the MSA, the measurement system analysis. Uh, all we're doing right now is just uh, setting it up. So uh, I just wanted to show you how to actually set it up for, for when you do your experiment. All right, I'm gonna go back to the tab where we, we've actually got our data uh, filled in. So now again, to analyze that, that data, we go to the assistant measurement system analysis. And we already, again, know we have measurement data and we're gonna analyze the data, okay? And this is called the gauge r and study cross. This is looking at data. This is looking at measurements that are, that are continuous uh, versus attribute or, or uh, appraisals. All right, so we go in the uh, dialog box for uh, the uh, gauge r and r study crossed. All right, uh, we have to fill in some certain uh, certain things like uh, who is the operator. All right, that's optional, but I, I would suggest you you uh, fill that in. Part is the part being studied. The ten parts in this case being studied. Uh, the measurements is the actual measurements we got from the part when, when we measured it. Okay, <clears throat> now we, we don't have a database of past inspections. So let's say that, that I am a manufacturing company and um, I, I've got this uh, area that inspects 
these parts, you know, a certain amount of times a day. And we're doing an, N an MSA on that measurement system to make sure that that inspection is actually giving us good data. Um, if that was the case, then I would go back to that data and I would look over, you know, the, the past six months, as long as it's, you know, a, a, con a consistent process and, and put in what the historical standard deviation is. That, that'll give me a better understanding of what's truly going on. But in this case, I don't have that, right? So I, I'm only going to use uh, the parts in the study. So I'm only going to look at uh, process variation from the parts that I've actually used in the study. Okay, so uh, I've got my tolerance. All right, so let's say that my tolerance is uh, six. Okay, and basically the tolerance is is the difference between your upper spec limit and your lower spec limit. All right, your upper and your lower spec limit. So I, I can put in the tolerance width or I can actually put the specs in. All right, yeah, I can do, do, do either one. And actually I'm not gonna make that six because uh, I'm gonna make that, we'll make that, make that three. Okay. So let's go ahead and hit uh, OK. All right, it's going to think. And it's going to give us an output here. All right, so with the assistant, the assistant gives us quite a few reports uh, uh, on different aspects of, of our analysis. Uh, the first report is always the summary report, all right? Uh, I'm actually going to go to the very last report, which, which is really kind of the first one you want to look at. And it's the report card. So the report card, in this case, just gives us, gives us information. It doesn't, it doesn't tell us anything about the health of our, uh, our data in this case. Uh, in other analysis, it actually comes back and tells us things like, do we have normal data? Uh, it tells us quite a bit about our data to help us understand, uh, do we have it, actual good data to use in this analysis? But in, in this case, in the variable gauge R and R, it doesn't do that. Uh, but it's always, it's always good to look at that first. This just gives you some information about the data uh, used, you know, what it should look like in your um, analysis. All right, so here we have uh, what's called the uh, variation report. All right, talking about uh, part to part interaction, test retest ranges. Again, this is more of an introduction. It's not so much of a uh, in-depth uh, uh, understanding of what this tool is, okay? Uh, and the real important metric here to look at is you know we as six sigma practitioners, lean six sigma practitioners, we 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 like pictures, pretty pictures, but it, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for what the data tells us, and and the data tells us that our our gauge, all right, our measurement system, uh, the the variation in our measurement system, the error in our measurement system is about 45.37% of our whole uh, uh, voice of the customer uh, of our, our uh, distribution of data. So th this is not a good thing. This is telling us that, that we have a bad measurement system. All right. Anything over 30%, over, anything over 30% error is considered an unacceptable amount of error. All right. Now the percent percent tolerance is really looking at um, how much of the tolerance does the error take up. All right. Uh, and those two things right there can really tell you a lot about the measurement system. Okay. So we come all the way up to the summary report and the summary report uh, just gives us kind of a, a basic overview of actually what's going on. It says, can you adequately assess process performance? All right, and it gives you a picture and it's got that uh, green, yellow, red and red is obviously stopped, that's bad, right? 
And so it says, can you adequately assess process, process performance? And it's in the red where it's no, it means you cannot adequately assess process performance. So your measurement system as it stands right now is not giving you good data. Okay, can you sort good, bad, uh, good parts from bad? Again, this, this is saying no, you can't. So it's, it's, it's amazing at this point, uh, I, I have a lot of my, my green belts and black belts at this point find out that their measurement system isn't giving them good data. So they might be throwing, throwing away good parts or letting bad parts get out the door. All right, services, transactions, et cetera. So again, this is a, a uh, you know, high level overview of really what's going on. Then, then you can come down here, look at your variation by source, uh, your total gauge, and then of that gauge, you know, how much is, is really uh, affecting user more repeatability or reproducibility, right? Uh, and those are things that are really talking about is the variation within the operator or is it between different operators? Okay, and lastly, um, we have our comments. And the comments are, are auto-filled by uh, Minitab. And, and what's, what's great about this is we can come in here and double click on this, double click on the comments and we can change those comments, all right? To, to equal, you know, the verbiage or wording that is, is more representative for our organization. All right, so let me shut this down. Uh, hopefully you have uh, become a little more educated on the uh, uh, gauge r and &R, the uh, gauge r and &R study crossed or the variable gauge r and &R. Uh, Again, my name is Kevin Clay uh, and I am one of the Lean Six Sigma instructors here at Six Sigma Development Solutions. Uh, if you have any questions concerning uh, this, uh, this, this video that we just showed you, uh, please do not hesitate to uh, contact me uh, at kclay at sigma-dsi.com. I will put that information in the description uh, of this YouTube video, and I hope that everybody has a wonderful day. Thank you.